This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Creating and removing users is a fairly easy process in Oracle. I'll show you how to do so in both Database Control and SQL Developer. I'll even do a quickie hit in SQL Plus just so you can see how to do it if you had to in a pinch. For the most part, though, if you go into a production environment, you're going to have stored procedure that creates users, or you'll do it through the GUI, like I'm going to show you here with OEM. Before we actually look at how to create a user, we're going to look at the profile. So the profile gets assigned to a user, and the default is what the users are going to get. Now, it has information about controlling their resources, but it also has information about their password. And this is really what I wanted to cover in this section on users. By default, it's going to expire the password every 180 days. If it gets 187 days passed, then it'll actually lock the account and they'll have to be unlocked. Number of passwords to keep so that they can't reuse them. You can set a number or unlimited number of days, set a number or unlimited. The complexity function is a PL SQL function that you can do string manipulation to see if it's complex enough. You can do the length of it, the number of characters, if there are special characters, if some are uppercase, some are lowercase. And then finally, you have the number of attempts to get in and they fail. You can lock the account and you can set the number of days for how long to lock. Okay, so on to the users. So I have some users in the account. I've been using Lewis to log on, so I'll go ahead and look at this. I have my authentication as password. I have a default table space. This is where I create my objects, my temp space. It's an unlocked account. I have a few different roles. I have unlimited table space. Let's go ahead and create a new user. Call him Joe Smith. Profile's going to be default. I have those two profiles. His authentication is going to be password. Be externally validated, which means like you have an LDAP or something. You can be global. I'm not going to expire the password. If I expired the password, then that means when Joe logs in, he'll have to reset his password. His default table space. I'm going to pick users. And the default temporary table space. I'm going to pick temp. I'm going to leave it unlocked. Once you've got the basic user defined, you can click top or bottom. So we go to the roles. These are the roles the person's going to have. We're going to give him connect by default. System privileges. So go back to roles. If we want to give DBA, I could assign DBA, OLAP DBA. So you come over here and these are the roles and these are the roles that come with the database setup or any that you've created. So say, okay, we go to the system privileges. These are at the database level. So rather than like objects or anything, it's create any index in any schema, create any table in any schema. When you get the DBA, you get to do things like this, but you can assign individual components as you need to. I won't do any system privileges. Go to object privileges. What kind of object you want to assign a resource on? So we look at tables. We're going to do alter and delete. On, and I'll pick Lewis. Employees, departments, and locations. You can alter and delete on these objects. And this is the lookup button here. So I've got alter and delete on each one of these. And if I gave the grant option, that means that Joe Smith can assign that to someone else. We'll come to the quotas. Give unlimited on users, which I believe was already the default. So consumer group. 
these are, if we're going to restrict the amount of resources they can use in proxy users, both of those are really kind of advanced topics, kind of outside the scope of this. So I'll go ahead and show the SQL that's mostly as it will be run. The identified, obviously, will be filled in. This could actually be run in SQL Plus. Matter of fact, I'll just copy that out. Save it off, and we'll come back to that later. Okay, so I'll return, and I'm just going to say OK. Object has been created successfully, so we can come down and look at Joe Smith. You can see how I set it up. I can actually edit the user if I want to change something, change the password, change any of the roles, the privileges. So you can change whatever, and I'm not going to change that right now. I also have the ability, if I wanted to create another user, say I have Joe's wife, and let's say she has the exact same permissions, I can say create like, we'll call her Mary Smith, give her the same password. And if you want to come down to the rules, you can see it's got the exact same privileges as Joe Smith. Let me say, OK. User has been successfully created. I look at my users. I now have Mary Smith. And there's Mary Smith's information. Exact same. So it's very simple in Enterprise Manager. So let's go on to SQL Developer and see how easy it is to create a user here. I'm going to connect as, I guess I'll do System. There you can see the data dictionary. You can actually say create user. And the screens look pretty much the same. I'm gonna say Joe Smith1 password. I actually like SQL Developer for creating accounts, but Enterprise Manager, I think, is what most people use. So it's not gonna lock it. I'm not gonna do addition, enable, default table space. Is users, temp is temp. We got our roles, and I'll do DBA again, connect. And it's default, default. System privileges, not going to worry about that. Quotas, not really going to worry about that. You can see the SQL basically looks like the SQL we had here. Great, Joe Smith. Doing the grants, DBA. Results, we'll apply it. Joe Smith one was created, the grant succeeded. Okay. And just like I said, a quick hit. I'm just going to go back. We've got this. Actually, I'm going to start up a new SQL Plus session. And I can take the code I had. I'm going to change this to Joe Smith two. Paste this in. And see user created. Let me just go ahead and put semicolons at the end of each of these. Change this to Joe Smith 2. And this is kind of what I meant when I said you'll probably inherit a procedure or something. It'll have the, all the create information. You'll just pass in a parameter and it'll go fill in the things for you. There we go. So we had created the user, did all the grants, and it all succeeded. So that's about it for creating users. Now you can drop user. And you can do that in any of these. So user dropped. We'll come down to our system, do a refresh, drop user. Cascade says take all its stuff with it, which it didn't have anything. Dropped, and we just go back into Enterprise Manager. And I will drop Joe and Mary. You can choose multiple. 
select multiple at once, Joe and Mary. And we're going to delete those. So are you sure you want to delete those users? Yes. And they have been dropped successfully. That's pretty much it for managing users.